Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy out there. And for those of you that are new here, I am Jim. Nice to meet you. Thanks for watching. I make tutorial videos every week about editing your photos and different software products to kind of remove complexity, show you how you can have fun, how to get things done, tips, tricks, deep dives, things like that. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and in this product there's a killer feature called sky replacement it is automatic and simple and amazing and that may be why you have this product if you have it if you don't have it you can get it at the link below but one of the things that happens is you put in a new sky and maybe you put in maybe you have a dull scene and you put in a brilliant sunset the thing that some people uh, may not notice or may not think about is hey you know what you need to do is get the white balance of that foreground that was kind of blah to match the brilliance of the sky that you put in um, and that's in, in other words in order to sell the idea of you know hey this sky belongs with this foreground you got to get that white balance right and I've had a few questions about how do I do that and so I thought I'd make a video that's what we're talking about today so I'm gonna start with this photo this has uh, been cropped but it's just a, a photo from Germany and I'm gonna go straight to sky enhancement which is or excuse me sky replacement which is over here on the creative tab I'm going to say sky selection. I'm going to load a custom sky. And this is just one of my own skies. And I'm going to drop that in. And I'm going to do a couple of things to get it looking just right. Number one, I'm going to pull that uh, sky defocus just to smooth that out a little bit. And I'm going to take the, the horizon position to something like negative 33, I think it was. And there we go. I have my new sky. Now, here's the before and here's the after. You will notice the building Actually, uh, with the colors in the building, it looks like it's fairly warm already. Some of that is due to this relight scene slider. So if I take that to zero, you kind of lose a little bit of that, but it defaults to 20. And basically, when they built the product, they realized that, hey, you're going to want to try to match the white balance and the color cast, if you will, of the foreground with the new sky. So they built that relight scene in with the default to 20. It works really well, but I don't feel like I have enough in the foreground to really bring out the brilliance in that sky. So when you start talking about white balance, one of the first things you may do is go over here to light and start playing with it and say, well, I need to warm it up. But like, I don't know, I don't really like that. Or maybe you cool it off. I don't know. I tend not to do that. There's two tools that I prefer to use for this kind of work, and they're both on the Pro tab. The first one is adjustable gradient. So I'm going to say set orientation. And I'm going to tilt this a little bit to kind of match the horizon, a little bit like that. And then I'm going to come over here and pull this down. And what I want to do is get it something about like that. So if you don't know how adjustable gradient works, there's a video for you. But anything below this line is going to get the full effect of whatever edits I make. And anything in, this, in these two sections in between will be a gradient. As it goes up, it'll decrease. And then above, it'll get nothing. Um, assuming I'm working on the bottom. The reverse is true if I'm working on the top. So I'm going to say done. You see top there, I'm going to go straight to bottom. And this is where I come in and start making some adjustments. I might bump up the exposure a little bit. I'm kind of riffing here. Maybe pull up the contrast. Um, maybe give it a little bit more exposure. Um, I could pull up shadows if I wanted to. Uh, I don't need to mess with highlights. There's really nothing there. Warmth. That's the reason. Um, in addition to the gradient, as you saw at that orientation, it allows me to pick what I consider top and what I consider bottom. So that's a key reason that I use this tool, but now I've got the warmth on the bottom and I'm just gonna bump that up a little bit. I need to look at my notes. Um, I could go pretty high if I wanted to, something about like that. And if I wanted to make it more vibrant, I can do that as well. That starts to give me a little bit nicer color tone in that bottom section to more closely mirror the overall um, look of the sky. So let me turn that off before. You can see it's a little bit more faded, a little less vibrant, and let's be honest, a sunset like that, you expect the whole photo to be kind of vibrant, not just the sky. So if I turn that back on, I think we're getting a little bit more of that color pop. And if you look at the before and after, you can see we started with a really kind of gray overcast day, which to be honest, I love those kind of days um, for photography. But I think overall, I'm, I'm getting a better version of this photo that more you know that has the foreground more closely mirroring the look of the sky that I put on it. Now the next tool and this is this there's really two tools that I like to use. One is adjustable gradient because it lets me separate the top from the bottom. The second one is photo filter, which is a fabulous tool. I'm going to go to amount of like maybe 15 uh something like that and I'm going to go to uh uh, that's 14. So let's say 15 and then a hue of like 22, 23, something about like that. 
um, but I'm gonna apply it with a gradient mask. And you click and drag to draw the gradient, and all I'm doing is dropping that tone shift for the photo filter into the bottom of the photo. If I click on that, you can see the bottom is getting the full effect and it starts to fade in a gradual or gradient manner until I get to that line and then nothing above. So that kind of isolates the sky. A gradient mask operates the exact same way as the adjustable gradient. They're both gradients. Um, in this case, I'm masking the tool so that it's only impacting the bottom of the photo. Now, one thing I don't really like is I think the path here is a little bit too orange. So I'm gonna go into Edit Mask, I'm gonna say Brush, and I'm gonna get the eraser, I'm gonna hide that. I need to change my uh, the size of my brush, and I'm gonna take the opacity down. I don't wanna remove it entirely, I just wanna reduce it. So I'm gonna say something like 59, 60%, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna erase some of that uh, color shift that I did from that path. It's a slight amount, but visually it helps me a little bit. I feel like it looks a little bit better being slightly reduced like that. And that's what I do. I mean, adjustable gradient and photo filter go a really long way. Now, um, if you wanna come back and adjust the overall tones, you might come back to the light tool and maybe change the, the temperature if you want a little bit. Overall, you could maybe go a little bit cooler, which I might would do in this photo but there's another trick I'm gonna to leave to uh, the next uh, slider or the next tool. Here, I might pull up the contrast a little bit and that's kind of impacting things overall. Maybe lift the shadows, maybe lift the whites a little bit. And this is me just playing with the overall look of the photo. But this is where I may go back to sky replacement. And here you have sky exposure and sky temperature. I like the warmth, I think it looks nice, but I tend to like a little bit more blue, even in my sunset, so I might take the sky temp down a little bit and the sky exposure up a little bit to brighten it, and I have something like that. And here's where I may go back, and this is really just season to taste, where I go back to adjustable gradient and say, okay, maybe I have a little too much contrast in the foreground based on the moves I just did, and maybe I wanna bump that exposure a little bit more, because you don't want the foreground, that's the other thing, it's not just color, it's also light and contrast. So I don't want the, uh, I do want the color to match, but I, I need to come back and check on my contrast and my shadows and things like that because I want the light levels to match. And so that's really what I do. There's the before and there's the after where I think I have warmer tones in the building, which really were brought up based on the, um, I forgot what it's called, gosh, uh, the relight scene. Uh, but then the other moves that I made here in the Pro Tab with adjustable gradient and photo filter, I think to really help uh, help me sell it. And then after I apply those, I go back and do some um, customization, which may include going back into adjustable gradient. It may include going back into sky replacement. And for me, it may include going to the light tool and making adjustments there. You can do any adjustments you want. The first thing I'd always do is put in a new sky. If I'm going to do a sky, put it in first because you want to start with the sky and the, and, and the foreground blended so that's your base new photo that you're working from because if you do all your edits in your foreground and then go adjust the sky you've then got to go fix the color tones and the light levels and things like that in the sky to match all the work you did i'd rather put in the sky first and then work on the overall look so there's my before and after i'm gonna get one more photo and show you this same technique one more time on a different looking photo okay here we go uh, and in both cases i've cropped this photo prior to um uh, doing this edit. I'm going to say dramatic sunset 4 and stick that on and the reason I chose that is because it's fairly blue and if you look at this photo before it's kind of got some warmth. The sky's not really warm but it's not really blue. It's kind of a, a faded. It was sunset but there was just no color in it but the overall foreground is kind of warm. Uh, part of that is that section there of that light coming off the building. So I wanted to put in a blue sky and go the other direction in this photo. Instead of warming up the foreground, I want to kind of cool it off. So one more time, I'm going to go to adjustable gradient. And in this case, my orientation, it's pretty fine to be honest, right in the middle. I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm going to go to bottom and I'm going to bump up the exposure because I think it's too dark. I want to brighten that a little bit. Maybe something about like that. I'm gonna add a little contrast. I gotta check my notes because I can't really remember what I did. Um, and maybe lift the shadows a tiny bit as well. Uh, and then here I might take the warmth to the left, maybe like a negative 15, just kind of cooling it off. Again, just trying to get the foreground to be a little cooler to match the cool that's in the sky. Um, and then one more time, a photo filter over here. And here I'm gonna take amount about 15. 
Um, I haven't picked the hue yet, so it's kind of turning purple. The hue here is 226. And then one more time, a gradient mask, and I'm gonna do something about like that. You know, and you can move this kind of around as you see fit. It may look a little bit better like that. You can see the gradient, that's how it's applied to the photo, and there it is done. So there's the before and the after where I've kind of cooled off the foreground. I still have that nice warm patch where the light is hitting the cobblestones, but the rest is a bit cooler, which I think mirrors the blue sky that was in there. Now from here, you can go in and do any kind of customizations. You can smooth out the sky if you want to do that with, like, with negative structure or even the sky defocus slider. You know, you can change overall color temp and that sort of thing. So what I generally do, as I said, sky, new sky first. Secondly, go in and adjust the tones and colors with an adjustable gradient and photo filter. And then I feel like you have your base photo and from there, go do any other edits that you see fit, which may include additional contrast, maybe AI enhance, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but that's generally how I approach it. And there's a before and after. And if you look at the before and after with the slider, you can see quite a bit warmer in the foreground and now a little bit cooler, which I think mirrors visually what's going on in the sky. So that's how I do it, my friends. Adjustable gradient and photo filter with a little bit of masking um, on the gradient uh, or using a gradient mask on the photo filter. Um, and of course, the gradient is built into the adjustable gradient tool to set that accordingly. Once you get that set with the new sky, go have fun, do other creative edits. And that's really how I would do it. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how to implement the, uh, this, these techniques in your own photos. And thank you for watching, my friends. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're doing super well. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Take care and... Adios.